And now, the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh boy. In a blink of an eye, we're back. Live but not new. It's the bonfire. Comedy Central <laughs> Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. We're doing yesterday's show. We're doing, well, it just feels like yesterday. We were in here uh, with Rude Jude, having fun. Watching the Today Show's second performance of Corey Feldman. Having a gosh darn blast. Gosh darn blast. We, we, you know, we leave the studio. We think we're going to go do a weekend of shows. You in Virginia Beach, me in Long Island. Next thing I know, Bonfire Devils versus Corey's Angels. It's on the Intero Bang. It's exploded. For one tweet, by the way. I thought my tweet was going to be innocently funny, and it set off the fell dog. Get up off the floor and... <laughs> um, so if you don't know, we have our doctorates in Corey Feldman's music degree, or in his musical career. That's what our doctorate's in. It's not anything else about Corey Feldman. We don't know the man. We've never met the man. We know a lot about his musical performances, which we've reviewed on old shows. As we said before, respect his acting. Oh, absolutely. Fantastic uh, actor. Respect uh, his life, uh, his orgy lifestyle. Respect <laughs> everything about him. We honestly do. We're not just saying that as bullshit. No. When he, uh, we read that article, we said, we read that article totally expecting to... Think he was going to come like, off like a an jerk asshole. off, and at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, the guy's, you know, he's into some weird sex shit, but I'm not here to throw stones at that. And then I was like, I don't know, something like that girl went to a party, she was into it, and she yeah. just said she didn't fuck Corey Feldman, she seemed like a twat. And we that all, chick seems like the villain in that story. And then we, and both times we watched the performances, Jay and I have both felt that in a way we're worried we might be punching down. We don't want to ever punch down. I do worry. It's one of the. I said initially, I did, we didn't want him on the show at all because we're like. I don't want to bring him on just to have him be made fun of. No, I almost did. I really got into the song in the background. He was saying that. I was like, as you said, he hit the bridge. I was like, maybe we're wrong. Maybe, I, just maybe, we are completely wrong. I put it out there. I wanted to be an angel. I wanted to audition for two weeks at his house to so, be an angel playing tambourine. Let's catch up to where we were. Well, yeah, so we so we were going to have him. But then when he was, we thought he was in Midtown. Well. The day we were here, and we wanted to have him on. But almost to say, like. The night before the Today Show. We would have talked about the angels. We would talked about whatever. Listen, there's a lot of questions. We've read a lot of statements. We found out about the angels. Was it from his website with all the rules about no men, you move into the house? Christine, looked that up. Is that, that's not his website. Does he put that out there? Like I that? don't think it was, but we found the rules one time, and I want to kind of know, because that's a point of reference that's made. But then, um, one of the angels left, went on Rude Jude's show, the All Out show on Shade 45. He came on, he interviewed her. She said they were allowed one meal a day, a vegan meal. We played the clip. Yeah. Rude Jude said it was weird. So, fast forward. Saturday night, was it? Ooh, yeah, it was no. Saturday night. No, it was just today. No, it was Saturday night. It was a Saturday. Oh, you're right. Because I was started, in the green started, room. It all started Saturday night. I was you're in right. the green room at Governor's, and um, one of our fans, a fan of Legion of Skanks, a fan of the bonfire, Ash, Ashley, she tweets at him like uh, he was. he had a political tweet, and so she tweeted at him. Hey, why do you only allow your angels one vegan meal a day? And then Corey started responding, you know, don't believe the hate. That's where she started. That's where she started. Okay. And he said, don't believe the hate. And then um, he asked her where she heard it. And uh, she said bonfire. She said the bonfire. She said us. It's fair. And then he said that we were bottom feeders. And that we were shitty. I believe, I don't have the tweet in front of me. He went at us pretty hard. He went at us pretty hard that's in a okay. Corey way. A lot okay. of a lot of letters and numbers in one word. That's oh, yeah. his. That's a style that he likes to write in. Hashtagged up like a mofo. I would call that dialect Feldog <laughs> if it was. If I could, I speak. Uh, like, uh, do you speak Feldog? You go. Yeah, massa, I, massa. Can, I can translate it. I can't speak it. I can only yeah, translate. I understand it. More than I can speak it. When the letter H is next to the number eight, it means hate or hate. to dislike. <laughs> How about uh, H-8-R-A-D-E? Oh, what, I don't even know what that is. Hate her aid. Hate her aid. Um, Getting a big old glass of it. Glass of it. Um, what are you looking at? Wait, he described in what you dubbed the Feld Manual. Oh, you have it right here off Movie Web. Where does that come from, though? Where's like the what's the source they quote? One of the angels. 
was on Tommy Davidson. And told him. One of the angels. Was on what? Was she was on what? An interview with Tommy Davidson. The way the comedian from In Living Color? Hang on. By the way, it's just so funny like when, people are, when people are typing, it makes our fucking studio sound like a newsroom when really we're just two shitheads. Oh, man. Uh, this is coming in on the Bonfire News Desk. Uh, an update from Jacob the Producer. The Supreme, this just came across the AP wire. Huh? I'm getting something in my ear. You got something, Christine? They did celebrity wife swap. Together, it was Tommy Davidson, oh, Corey right, Feldman. Right. So, and it was kind of set, they kind of showed that on that episode of Celebrity Wife. Oh, how have we not watched it? I do, yeah, I watched it. It was on the other day. Should it. we should we do a bonus episode that people can? <laughs> Jacob's just already nodding his head. Jacob's like, I want it. I got my waffle shirt on. I look great. I, I want to do it so bad. Here's the man. I'll tell you what. I hate to ever admit it, it gets to me, but it only hits me for a couple hours. And I think we should absolutely watch Celebrity Wife Swap and and break that down. Okay, I think it'd be hilarious. But like. I made a mistake this morning of doing like a fucking twenty minute of like a Reddit hole. No, why? Oh, I don't know. Why don't do you know. go there? I'm why do you like, go there? I'm just like, does our show suck? No. Like, <laughs> why do you do that? I, I'm fine. It's I'm like okay or, now. Yeah, it's like, uh, but it yeah. hits you for a, for a half hour. You get a nice little like, what the fuck, man? Dude, that's a that's a fucking that's a dark dark place. To Some have. of them are funny in the sense that they just go. Because used to love it, shows go on stale. Like, we've been on for one year. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's that's the YouTube generation shit. It's like, you know, build, big pop and then go fizz. I don't know, who gives a shit? Anyways, back to Fell Dog. If we can ever possibly, by the way, just so you know, if we can make it possible still, the, the invite is out there. Um, 844-266-3399, 844-COMEDY-9 is the number. The Bonfire at SiriusXM.com is the email and at the Bonfire SXM. To follow everything we do along on our Twitter and Instagram and everything, um, he can call in. But here's the thing: I don't want people. Or, or we, we, let's not tweet it. Stop tweeting it. Well, well, but see, that's the only way we're going to yeah, get at him. God damn it! So listen, I mean, I think we have to give up the fact that he's ever going to be on the show. Yeah, we're just going to have to be observers in the world of Fell Dog. We can't live in that kind of world of love. I'd love we're to discuss just this with him. Body feeders, though. But I would love to discuss this with him. But you, w- but you're not going to get anywhere. You're right. He's too egotistical. Dude, I had that. I I had to explain that to an uh, an audience uh, this weekend. Not the audience, but a girl in the audience. We had a drunk yeah. uh, a girl. The the Redskins played at one. Yeah, she's wearing a Redskins jersey. She's a pretty girl. She's obliterated, and she's literally doing that. Like, and I am drunk. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Like, no, it's just the fucking staff here sucks, oh. and they're shitty, and they bu- and they need to learn how to act. And you're like, well, no, no, no. The staff here is great. I'm like, you're yeah, you're hammered. But I'm, but I'm trying to go. They're trying to kick her out. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want you to get kicked out. I'm like, I just like, you're. Well, it was the end of the show. There was yeah. literally two minutes left, and I was like, I don't want you to get kicked out and have a whole thing here. I'm like, but you, you just can't. Huh? And you, just, it's such a disheartening thing. It's like you'll never get it. You'll just never get that you're wrong here. But see, that's the whole thing. So Ash. Ashley tweets at Corey Feldman that you know he's why is he feeding his angels that he snaps back. Ash worries that maybe she's disrupted the the chemistry between the fell dog and the bonfire. So she tries, and I understand. She I, makes I, a I very. Be honest, I be honest, at first, it stung a little bit because I didn't get at first that our campers were like taking shots at us to get in his good graces, but like almost in like the form of like let's not lose this. Well, here's the fish thing, on the hook. I immediately when she, her first tweet was like, "Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe they don't care about me." I was like, I can sense the sarcasm. See, I didn't. In my mind, I was going oh, like, does Ash think we hate her for some oh, reason? <laughs> well, oh, she didn't. She doesn't follow me on Twitter. So at first I was like, oh, maybe she does hate me. But then she follows the Legion of Skanks. So I was like, okay, well, that's that's in the same group. I don't know. And then I read her profile and I was like, oh, she's a smart ass. And it was hilarious because yeah, yeah. she's like, oh, you're right. They don't care about me. To which you responded, why don't you send us nudes? Mm-hmm. To which Fell Dog said, like, oh, yeah. see? see, this is what they think about you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, me being vanilla. You send nudes. I'll, I'll feed you three times a day, though. Yeah. And you and, can have all the meat you want, Ash. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, it kept going where he kept trying to get her like, see, join my fam. And then I responded. So he really is like... In in a weird way, recruiting. That's she's a pretty girl. That for me, for the picture in the Twitter, she's a very, very pretty girl. But that was the thing where I wrote back to her and I said, "You didn't do anything wrong, Ash. Just don't accept a bus ticket." Yeah, that's all. That was hilarious. Thank you. That's hilarious. all. I, that's all I wrote. And then that fucking snapped the fell dog. He it. blocked me. He blocked you. He blocked the bonfire. He wrote something about me being a douche in bathwater, which I'm trying to. Find. Oh, he called us all kinds of uh, bottom feeder. Christine, are you blocked? 
No, I'm not. I'm finding this. Oh, you're wa- you can walk in the world of fell dog. I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Christine, will you double agent it? Will you go in and be an angel? <laughs> I was gonna. You could play the piano a little bit. Like, if I lost twenty pounds and got a boob job, do you think I could one day be an angel? And he'd probably like tweet back something like, "Maybe if you try your hardest." If you hashtag go for it. <laughs> oh, I'm man. gonna get Christine the blinky light up shoes. Someone put it on Twitter. They found them. Oh, they found we, you I them. mean, can we get Comedy Central to get all of us? Oh, can we? Uh, Hang on, Jason Tennessee says that the last song is just uh, that the newest one he did was a cheap knockoff of Amen by Kid Rock. Thanks for the call, Jason. Um, let's uh, let's play that. Let's see if he's right about that. Hold on, I'm trying to find the one where he talks back to you, but I can't. Did Fell Dog delete the tweets? We're doing our bonfire research, and I'll tell you this: is he he deleted all the tweets about us? I don't know. I don't see unless I. You think back. he just nailed Fury? You think he just fucking rocked Murkface out of his world? Yeah, Murkface was like, Did I'm going to tell my father the king. No, you're not. You're not blocked. You're not blocked. Yeah, I'm not blocked. I'm using. Hold your, on, let me look. You're still in his world. I'm still in. Yeah, you you can still walk in the world of. Oh wait, Big J Okerson, or I don't care. But this is from yesterday. And I, shit went down. me saying I don't care? No, someone said to unblock you. All, yeah. You wrote, all campers need to tell the fell dog to call the show tomorrow. Yeah. He, black, he blocked us. <laughs> I'm assuming he's talking about you because you're temperamental. If you don't call tomorrow, you're a... Oh, one of our fans was calling him pussy lame or afraid of words. <laughs> and then fell dog wrote, or I don't care, which is... You know what? That's a, a solid response, fell dog. We get it. Here's the problem. I keep wanting to just stop and be like, this guy's mentally ill, and we just can't do this. He is, though, but he is mentally ill, but in some... I, there's, I, I, I'm holding on to this outside thing that, like, he could be reasoned with. You can't, I don't though. know. Listen. Okay, here's the Ash Dog. Why do you only... Uh, Ashley wrote, why do you only give your angels one vegan meal a day? And he wrote, LOL, why, the letter Y, do the letter U, rely yep. on bottom feeders for your YR press? I mean, he writes like a 16-year-old Staten Island girl. Click on tweets and replies and you'll see all the shit that he wrote, not just tweets. Okay, there it is. So you'll see all how his far responses. Back, what is it? Uh, it's, it's two hours. That's time mark different. Um, I want to, uh, I mean, like, let's give to his charities so we could just become his friend again. Uh, you want to donate? You want to get in through his wallet? Dude, let's I'm go totally through. fine going through his wallet. Um, let's get let's get light up shoes for the staff, mm-hmm. and then let's donate some money to the Felton. I and it'll be on our show. Don't. Well, here's what blows my mind. This is a kid again. Been in a lot of great movies. What I don't understand is like what? Why does he think this is good? You know, why does he think this is good music? Why is he? Well, like, that's the whole problem. Like, that's like, why like, they, like, that's... He, like he could probably critique someone being a pretty shitty actor. Very easy. If he watched me acting, I'm sure he can comb through it. We've, I mean, we've talked about this endlessly about how basically if he just took like small. By the way, I think he straight up deleted the entire thing with all of our fans. Wow, it's not on there. And well, he delete every time he. I got him. Every, time, every him? time he bans somebody, yeah. I'm up with him talking about Hillary Clinton. I'm saying, but every time he bans somebody, it's it, great. It, takes, it gets rid of them all. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's in mine. Oh, because hash. Oh, cause, yeah. So all the tweets on us are are gone. Hashtag new kids on the blocked was probably my favorite one. <laughs> when he blocks you, he always does creative wordplay. I'll give the guy this. Fucking great at wordplay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's a pun machine. So we it kind of started this thing. Now that it was like he was upset at us, and then a lot of campers, which thank you to everyone that tried to get him to call into the show, and no one was really too mean to him. We don't we try to avoid that, but now it's kind of gotten to the point where we just got to fucking leave it alone with him. I guess him. so. I mean, like... He's not going to be reasoned with. He doesn't want to talk about it. In his world, we're just bottom-feeding haters. Hate, and that's H-A-T-E-R-S. I, w- I want him to say the words to me. Not that I, like, you know, I'm anyone that necessarily deserves this or anything, but I want to hear him say the words and believe the words, like, no, I'm, like, a really good singer. That's what's blowing my mind, like... That he I, thinks he's a listen, great singer. I couldn't uh, hit that falsetto stupid note any better than he possibly could. Look me in my eyes right now. Look Take me a chance! You're trying to do that, though. Look me in my eyes. Because mm-hmm. I remember a little boy that grew up in Pennsylvania mm-hmm. that fucking nailed Casey and JoJo. Depends on the song, man. See? So there you go. No, so no, no, play no. to your strengths. Oh, listen. I'll argue that I think I'm a better singer than Corey Feldman. Oh, and yet, 
please? I'll, I'll challenge him right now. Oh, I mean, listen. Again, let's not tweet at him, but let's just hope that this little piece of volume that just... I want to sing one of his songs and nail it. <laughs> if no, can... here's the thing. I, 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 I mean, I'm half joking, half not in the sense that I think I'm a better singer than him, probably. Yeah. Naturally, but... You can carry a tune. But still... Would never like if, if the the band that I'm the lead singer of goes nowhere. <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense at all? Like yeah. it goes nowhere. I'm not like I don't have like any kind of unique or really good voice. And that anymore. always is what we come back to when we talk about him. Is you're on the Today Show because you were a star in the '80s, not because of your music. And don't act like it's because of your music. No, and and the shitty thing about it is what what bums me out about him is at the end of the day, like we actually do hold this like modicum of respect for him where you think i mean and we've, we've said, said, it, we've said mean, it on air that we thought it was fucking rude that the today show had him back because it was a disaster he still had like of how how like you know uh talented he is in some ways like to be that dumb to re not realize like does that show brought you back to make it to mock you like you i mean you made no, no, this is coming from a radio made, show that spent two has spent fucking eight hours yeah. mocking his music you but made we, you made a they made a viral video of his ridiculous performance yeah and then brought him back to do it again. And they didn't bring him back to redeem himself. And, and, and but let me tell you something. I, I mean, the, the, the jackpot, the like high fives that must have happened in the control room when he tried to hit that falsetto. No. <laughs> Wait, do we have that clip? Of course we do. <laughs> Take a chance. Lou, fire it up, Lou Dog. Because it didn't make sense to them at that time. But those all became amazing legends. Right. Oh my God! And that's where you got to nail him. He correlated himself to uh, Eminem. What was it Eminem? When Kiss Nirvana. first started, when Eminem first Kiss. started, when Nirvana first started, they all got hate. Yeah, but then see, but it, it's a, the, the the argument changes to make his own point for himself. So the thing is, he says he's been doing this for thirty years. That's what he told Sharon Osbourne. He's only been doing it for thirty years and laid out all of his CDs and forty-five records and everything like that. So it's like. Now, are you just starting out and getting hate? Or well, see, you... this is why I said that this is kind of the end of the whole saga. Yeah, is yeah, be yeah. Is because... Well, here's the thing. At the end of the day, I don't want to... I, I can feel I don't want the guy to constantly be dealing with bullshit from us. Like, I'm not trying to ruin his life. I just have some real questions about this fucking performance. You know what I mean? Oh, fucking Ash. What happened? I just saw a tweet because I was blocked. Uh huh. She is a smart ass. <laughs> she tweeted at Corey Feldman, "Have you ever watched Billions on Showtime?" <laughs> oh, I saw that. I didn't yeah. see that. I was blocked. <laughs> that was my first time seeing that. Uh, tip of the cap, Ash. You really are a smart ass. I think I'm falling in love with this girl. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> and he wrote, "Don't have time to watch TV, so nope, never heard of it." All right. Schedule too busy. See that one where he said why he couldn't call in because the schedule's too busy. He said, uh, "What did he say to you, Merc Face?" Uh, he wrote, I'm too BZ, capital B, capital Z. <laughs> Here's the rule on fucking bonfire Twitter from now on, Christine. You only tweet in fell dog. Uh, or for the day. I'm I sorry. mean, by the way, he like, uh, she really, she really shut down. She's like, oh. I know. I mean, by the way, I couldn't go forward the way she genuinely reacted to me telling her she had to tweet like Corey Feldman. You were, you were so sad in your face. And then he goes, there you go. It's exactly how much they care about you, Tash. Yeah, they... He does not like us. No. I get it. He made we've fun made of the a, campers too. We've, that we, was where he crosses the yeah. motherfucking line. Oh, he says that all our fans are stupid sheep and whatever like that. Like sheeple, sheeple. sheeple? <laughs> <laughs> these aren't sheep. These are BZ people. Yeah, these who are we all entertain during the day. Who are oh fuck? Who are driving their car? But I was trying to think of car with a number. You can't do it. <laughs> it's so hard to speak fell dog. It is, but I wish I could. I wish you could get fluent in it. Ah, uh, man, someone should make a... Uh, JK, D DS. Some, yeah, someone should make a grid on how to translate words into Feld, Feldman. Oh, that'd be great. And then you could use Feldman it. Feldman Rosetta? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Feldman Rosetta. <laughs> hey, I'm Corey Feldman. Do you want to speak like a delusional asshole <laughs> who doesn't ever fucking know what's really happening? First things first. Dress like an old-timey assassin. <laughs> yeah. Second news. Shine your face up like you're about to be in a prize fight. <laughs> and you have Vaseline on your eyebrows, so the gloves will slip right off and not hook your skin open. Dress like an Olympic-level uh, fencer. And then or never carry a sword. Or you're handling a beehive. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, yeah, it's fucking done. I mean, it's done. And it, it, it came to the conclusion that we all knew it was going to come to is when he found out he was talking to us about him, or when he found out we were talking about him. Of course, you'd call us haters and bottom feeders. You could probably tell by my outfit, if you're wondering where I've been for the past four years, I've been in Starfleet Academy. <laughs> yeah. I was playing a video game, and then a real spaceship came down and sucked me to space. <laughs> I'm now an ensign in the Starfleet Academy. I've seen so many different worlds filled with dancing and angels. Hamster's last words to me were, hey, always live our dream of getting into Starfleet. Exactly. So now, here I am, an ensign in Starfleet. <laughs> Honestly, if he said any of that, I'd almost be like, oh, that's hilarious. As I've always said, if he said this was a joke, I would be like, man, this guy's a fucking genius. He's a genius. If he came out and was like, yeah, that music's ridiculous, of course. He's like, I wrote that on a Casio when I was high on nitrous. I mean, but he says things instead. His world, it goes, Michael Jackson goes, I can make that a huge hit. Dude. And I'm like, I'm not letting him because it's my art. <laughs> that was a tweet that I just fucking saw that blew yeah, my yeah, goddamn yeah. mind. Reading it. Well, I was trying to find the tweets about us, and then someone asked him about his performance on uh, Howard Stern in 1992, and he backed it up by saying that Michael Jackson said that he would have made that fucking song a, what a was that hit. Song? What was that song? Christine, what's wrong? Oh, Howard Stern 92? Well, was it What's Up With The Youth? Hold on, I'm trying to find it right now. But that is, uh, that's insane. I mean, maybe he's right. We don't know. It does it like a newsroom in we, here. We, we don't know what happened at those pajama parties, but it could have. He could have rolled over and been like, you know, I could make that a hit. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking popper. Hey, uh, hey Macaulay, give us the room. <laughs> Macaulay, we need the room. Would you mind giving us the room for a moment? He's swirling a glass of wine. So, CF. Is this is this the song? No, it's human nature, dog. You're no, this right here is the song it's going to be. And it's about what's up with the youth in America It is what's today. up with the youth. Gang violence, drugs. But I just want to get a peek. I'm so, I have so, by the way, and to his, to his uh, compliment, and, and pause this for a second. Heart sir. It's fucking great. That's great. To his, uh, like much to his credit. Yeah. Like uh, this new song, I, I don't. I don't even remember the song from the first Today Show performance. What? Go I for it. I, 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 yeah. Okay. Now it was, it was like I can, But I mean, like I'm in my head. If you're like Corey Feldman now, uh, uh, that falsetto note, like the new ones. Oh, got that to, that erased you. Got you? To give like, peace, chance. That, that erased you, like right the Men now. in Black thing. Yeah. You boom. heard it. You like, I don't know. I don't remember any song because I remember Go for it, mostly because of the dancing. Go for. So is this it. the song? Yeah, give us a little in the middle of this. No, oh, Jacob's having a sidebar. Yeah, you wrote it yourself? I didn't produce it yet. Let's hear for Corey right now with the song. Let's all start dancing, baby. Go ahead, Corey. <laughs> I mean, Howard's and he, shaking his ass. And, and he has, yeah, and Corey Feldman doesn't get that this is like a joke. I mean, there's a, there's a little person in a grass skirt next to him. Do we say he's got rhythm? The guy's got rhythm. Dance like a... I mean... I mean, really, I guess the point is, tell me someone doing Michael Jackson moves better. Touche. I mean, really. By the he, way... He, look, look, he does it way better than I would do it. Some of these girls in the audience are bodacious. Real 1992. Uh, now I wonder... Oh, I, was saying that, I was saying that idea before, but I'm wondering if we should do that. If we should go take... Ask for like a Corey Feldman routine and film me and you taking a dance class for it. It's right by my house. Like, like we have the whole crew go in one day and we film that as like a supplemental thing. The Today Show performance dance because sure. those are the best moves. Of course, that's updated. That's modern. And see, he, this and, is and like any lip syncs. But see here at this point you're like, oh my god, that chick was hot. Uh, at this point you're like, okay man, you know he's trying to do a music career. In 1992, I bet the song wasn't that ridiculous. Yeah, 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 it was. <laughs> I mean, but, listen to it. I don't know. There's a lot of shit in 92 like this. But then, like, it's clear that Howard I guess, Stern's yeah, you're right. It's like, would, would this be in the world of, like, come, baby, come, baby, baby, come? Like, oh, it's yeah. like just dancey, kind of like 90s yeah. shit. Yeah. He, uh, he also did lip sync everything back then. That guy's great. Stutter, I don't know who Stuttering that guy John. is. Stuttering John. Stuttering John. That was Stuttering John? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize him with that long-ass hair. 
All right, so we get it. Yeah, we get it. Oh, by the way, did we ever check if that song Amen by Kid Rock? Yeah, it sounds nothing like it. No, that guy was wrong? Yeah. I mean, it was like a knockoff version. It's a real stretch. Well, let's just, I mean, we got a great guest coming in here in five minutes, and there's stuff, other stuff I want to talk about, but I guess we can say that as of right now, the chapter on Feldog and the Bonfire is ending. We have this right here. Our, our buddy, uh, Tyler in Arizona, just wants to know if we want to, he's still unblocked. Is there any last words? No. No, just let it go? Dude, we're not going to change nothing. Let's huh? let it go. Let it go. Yeah, no, not even going to chase him. Just like, you know what it is, though? Should he say, and let's do this officially now, because what we never got to in this was, uh, they said, like, you know, they, they apologize. Oh, they mean you know what? You're absolutely right. Because they apologize. They don't mean any harm. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just like, want to talk to you, and he goes, I haven't heard them try to apologize at all. Well, they said forgiveness is the only way, and that's our friend, our friend Jenny Jen tweeted at him and actually had a kind of little back and forth dialogue with him. And uh, he told her, answer, zero fucks. Oh. Yes, they're fans of Corey's. It's National Compose. Oh, be- oh, okay, this is a different thing. Oh, this is Merkface starting it all up. Merkface really got in there. Yeah. Dug his knuckles in. <laughs> Cares about the show. Sirius is global, not national. Duh. How many Fs given? I mean, are you shitting on our range of who we reach out to, Corey? Is that him he said that? Yeah. What do he say? Because now I'm just kind of getting a little upset that you're trying to take on the fucking bonfire. Don't rev up 0 to 60 but, but, soda. But it doesn't matter. Here's the thing. The for, national exposure he wrote. For the it's sadness. Sirius is global. You're like, all right, dude. For the sadness we've caused him, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm going to back that up by saying for any frustration or anger or sadness. But I, I want to have a real, genuine, open dialogue with him. 844-COMEDY-9. Oh, this is fucking perfect. The ball's in your court. So, yes, Tyler. He says, I spread... To those with open hearts and open minds. I don't waste my time with losers who are jealous of my beautiful reality. Hell yeah. He's right. You know what? Love that. <laughs> Love. You're right. I would, honest to God. Well, if I had the room for them where I'd have to see them all the time, I wouldn't mind having a house of hot teen runaways. But how do they get there without the bus tickets? Oh, I'll send them a bus ticket. I'll buy. That goes oh, against, I'll, oh, I'll buy a bitch a bus ticket from anywhere. <laughs> yeah. By the way, if you're accepting bus tickets, you should be kidnapped because uh, it's bus. Make him at least fly you out. Oh me? I buy a bitch a bus ticket oh, from anywhere. Me? I got that bitch a Greyhound like yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Get to the station. Go to the station. It'll be there waiting for you. Uh, wow, well, there it is. So Tyler, so if you want to let him know officially that there's been a public apology. To, but uh, no one, don't him. fucking spam him. Don't spam him. Uh, we'd like him and say, we apologize. We'd like him to call and have a real open dialogue about his music. Uh, we would be respectful and uh, genuine. And, uh, oh, it's going to be hard. Oh, it's going to be hard, though. <laughs> that was very serendipitous timing, Lou. <laughs> Did you hear what just happened there, Dan? No. We're just like, I go, and listen, we want to have an open dialogue. We respect you, and we, we just want to give you a chance to, to talk it out with us. And then that falsetto came in, and I was like, oh, it's going to be hard. Yeah, I know. I heard. But he said, uh, he just he just laughs at the haters. It's just a few dumb kids in their mom's basement. It's true. Yeah. Tyler, from your mom's basement, let them know that we've apologized. Yeah, and also... Tell t- your mom to make me a fucking sandwich. And tell her I miss her and kiss her on her face. Tell her I, I still beat off to her. No, don't. But seriously, don't say that uh, to your mom. She seems no, to don't. Lovely. I'm sure your mom's great. And Ty, you know Tyler. Yeah, I love him. Tyler's she, the best. sweetheart. And now he's old enough for me to actually get him into a bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I'll do next time I'm in Arizona. So, Tyler, yeah, let him know he's been apologized for. 844-COMEDY-9. <laughs> 844-266-3399. Follow us. On uh, at the bonfire, SXM Dan Soder also. <laughs> what, what's good? What's what? Where's our plugs? I want to. Dude, hold on. Uh, Sarah McPants is tweeting me. His his texting infuriates her more than his child abductions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more upset with keeping with, with uh, his language more than keeping women in captivity. I take offense to the word you wrote. All campers need. <laughs> yeah, all campers need to text the Feld dog to call the show tomorrow. That's what you texted. I or did. You, you I wanted tweeted. them to. He I blocked really us all, and then wrote. Uh, and then someone on Twitter wrote. Call this nigga show you silly goose, and then Corey <laughs> Feldman wrote back. I take offense to that word, but thanks. 
I guess I take offense to that word. Geese. <laughs> <laughs> it's not goose. It's plural. It's geese. We're silly geese over here in the fell dog house. And, and then when I tweeted at him, he wrote another douche, and he spelled it D-E-U-S-C-H, joins the bathwater. Thanks for showing me your face. Now I can letter four get it. <laughs> Number four? Yeah, and then I had to go to the store immediately and get all a bunch of ointment for that sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Corey Feldman realizes this, but I had to have skin graft surgery yesterday because of that. Sick ass burn. Yeah. I thought it was psoriasis. Yeah, I thought it was Turns just... out it was just a sick ass <laughs> burn. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, Dan Soder is going to be at Hyenas in Dallas, Texas, Thursday, November 3rd through Saturday, November 5th. Get your tickets at Hyenas Night. Uh, oh my God! What a I'm mouthful sorry. it always is. I, I'm just gonna put it on DanSutter.com. You got to. But hyena, <laughs> right now, right now you can get tickets at HyenasComedyNightClub.com. For HyenasComedyNightClub.com. No the, spaces. So many letters. Or you the, know what? Hyenas. You can take a little page out of the Fell Dog book here and fucking shorten that up, baby. <laughs> Throw a couple of numbers right there. Maybe instead of nightclub, it'd just be like a picture of a moon. Yeah. And then, like, you know, a, a moon and, like, a billy club. <laughs> Big J. is going to be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. That's Thursday, October 27th through uh, Saturday, October 29th. That's this weekend. So go to BigJComedy.com for tickets. And then shooting second season of What's Your Fucking Deal for NBC CISO at the Bitter End in New York City, November 6th through the 10th. Go to BigJComedy.com for tickets to that, too. I'm going to be guest miking on a lineup. That's going to be so that fun. That is fucking stupid. The lineup is going to be great. Christine already told me the lineup of my show, and it's like, it's a dream lineup and listen Fucking i know I, I was excited the way they worked christine's christine is kicking ass by the way and then, uh, we're booking the show with yeah. uh, rebecca trent and everybody it's going to be a lot of fun and next all the bonfire guys are going to come hang out next the, tuesday you know. dude live bonfire and next tuesday for the new york comedy festival nycomedyfestival.com uh, for tickets we're doing a live six to eight broadcast of the bonfire at the village underground in the west village that's the same place we did the uh one year anniversary show but this one the difference is that it's going to be in fact live yeah. uh going out over the airwaves as we do it it's going to be a lot of fun hope you guys could be there we'll be right back we have a fun guest coming in it's the bonfire and now back to the bonfire with big j okerson and dan soder that's the one part where i'm like ah. i'm leaving Run. I'm walking out. You know, you're right. I don't get this Nirvana kid. I don't like it. It angers me. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J. Okerson. I sure am. That's a band, Nirvana, that came out. And when they did, oh boy, did they get hated on. Oh, wait. No, they didn't. No, they got H hated on. <laughs> yeah. um, what's his name on the phones? Uh, Matt and North. Oh, wait, no, it's um, Mac. Mac and. In the Carolinas? No, he's in the car. Oh, he's in the car? He's, just, That's what he's in the car. Murkface said? You don't have to take his call, but he uh, told us to look up the Dunning-Kruger effect to explain Corey Feldman. And it's a, uh, on Wikipedia, it says it's a cognitive bias in which low-ability individuals suffer from illusionary superiority. Illusionary? 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 Well, I'm one of those uh, low-ability individuals, man. Listen to these guys. They don't even know how to talk. They don't even... They properly... They improperly diagnosed me with... Dun <laughs> I'm, I don't have Dunning-Kruger. I'm much more of this. <laughs> no, I've been tested for Dunning-Kruger syndrome three times. I always come up empty. <laughs> but it's saying they mistakenly assess their ability as much higher than it really is. And he said that might explain Corey Feldman. And I think it's just, yes, people being around you your whole life. Oh, yeah, dude. Abs I mean, yes, absolutely. Our guest is lost in the building. He's lost in the building. It's he was only somewhere else. I don't know. We're, 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 we're looking for him somewhere. Yeah. Um, I want to get into it more on because uh, I have some videos by then to put up. But yeah. there was a... Uh, you were Virginia, Virginia. Virginia Beach, which I had a blast at, by the way. The, a lot uh, of fun? A lot of fun. It started off rough. I landed. This is, this is a weird thing for a man to even have to think about doing and then actually doing. Yeah. I flew out there the night before because okay. I had to do uh, morning radio and TV. Landed, got to the airport with plenty of time for my flight. Hour some, 45 minutes before my flight. An hour Jeez, and 45 minutes this. before my flight or so. That's yeah. a long time before your flight. Yeah, dude, at JFK, though, which I'm saying right now, fuck JFK, dude. That airport, I try to never, ever go there. You're talking to a LaGuardia guy. I'm a LaGuardia guy, too, and I'll, I'll tell through you what. Through, baby. There's right off the Grand Central. There shouldn't be an airport. Where in what they have a shuttle bus that gets you like n not even it gets you a half mile closer to the 
uh, baggage claim yeah. than it does like for the mile and a half you'd have to walk. If you just, I mean, it's cra- Terminal Four. I was in. <laughs> it's a twenty-five, thirty-minute walk to get to the baggage claim. It's in. There shouldn't be an airport that big. Yeah, there's a uh, Dallas Fort Worth is up there with JFK as far as my least favorite airports. I hate it. Dallas Fort Worth is a terrible one. There's a lot of shitty airports. People say O'Hare. I've never had a problem with O'Hare. Newark's another one of those though, where it's like Atlanta. I was you're in like, Terminal B four hundred and twelve. Well, that's <laughs> that's what happens in Atlanta, where you're like you're in Terminal A, and you're like I'm in. Then my connection flight's in Terminal T, and then all of a sudden I'm like walking in an underground tunnel, and I'm like, do I work for the airport now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that underground tunnel is weird. But however, do I have restricted access to this? But also, every five feet in Atlanta's airport, though, I feel like there's one of those. That's the best. Food. That's my most comfortable train uh, tram system. Good tram system in Atlanta. In an airport. It does. It just keeps going in a loop, and it shows up every two minutes. So I don't have a problem with that. All Atlanta right. does not bother me. Plus delicious food. Atlanta does it? Oh, they got a Chick Fil A. They got a couple of yummy things. They got. A don't good... you give me? Don't you talk to me about a Chick Fil A? <laughs> yeah, that's a new thing. Oh, it's my new thing. But anyway, I land. Um, did you find him? Yes. Am I? Did you find him? Wow. It's impressive. I, um, so weird. I uh, maybe he just fucked us up. <laughs> I, uh, Surprise! I me. would love if he was just sitting in another studio. Just yeah. like oh, maybe it's just the well, these guys. These guys are really uh, the late to their own shit. But you're saying, um, I landed, and I uh, when I get there, oh, of course I go down to get my bag, and it's not there. And I go to the baggage claim lady, and she goes, "Oh, it was kept behind for extra screening." I'm why? Like, I'm like, why? She goes, "Was your bag suspicious?" You go, well, I, I usually wrap it in a trench coat in a in a big hat. That's what I said. I go, well, it wasn't a bag so much as a pressure cooker with wires hanging out of it. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, what a nice... And, they, and they're so like, you feel bad because that's a situation where you know for sure the person you're dealing with is not the fuck up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're not... Well, also, they let you But you're know, angry at the uniform they're wearing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're like, you Delta cocksuckers have fucked me again. Whenever I call Time Warner and curse them out, I always tell the person, this isn't about you. This is about the blood-sucking company you work for. Yeah. And then I let them have it. Yeah, but it's really, it's it's in a, uh, it, so I, I'm doing, I came in early to do radio and a morning TV thing out there. Yeah. Coming nope. up on the show, nope. no we've close. got Big J Okerson, who's going to be at the Funny Bone all weekend. Do you know how lucky I was that I swear to you, it happened, I, I flew out the night before yeah. and made a game time call to be like, you know what, I usually fly in basketball shorts, flip flops with socks, <laughs> and like uh, whatever, you know, sweatshirt or something. You dress like a guy that's always getting out of prison when you fly? Yes. <laughs> I always look like I'm a parolee, and I'm always I'm always holding like four or five papers, like, gonna, I swear to God, I just got out of jail uh, just now, but yeah. I'm trying to get my life on check, but I just need a slice of pizza. If you can help me with a slice of pizza, like, sir, they're boarding your flight. <laughs> oh, okay. So they would... uh. Yeah, because it was a nighttime thing, and I, I lived the day before I flew instead of flying early morning. Yeah. I was wearing, like, you know, thank God, at least, like, jean shorts, which okay. is my, and, and, like, sneakers, and, like, right. and like I'm actually almost identical to what I'm wearing right now. It's, it's great. See, I it's always, fine. But I always like, travel that way. People who travel... But in, it's the in, day before... The thing is, like, so I wore it the whole day before, and, you know, I smoke cigarettes. It smells, it smells, I'm very aware of that. This It smells like smoke. So I don't even have like anything like Febreze or freshen anything up even, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I have nothing. And the only thing that was pissing me off is how I pack in my carry on book bag. Yeah. There my uh here. My carry on book bag I have um Oh yay. Yeah, dude. What's up? Oh, nice. Yeah, coming in with a bagel. What's up, this is great and vodka. <laughs> and vodka? This yeah, is yeah. how the fucking machine rolls. Where do I just stand right here? That is Burke Kreischer, everybody. You oh, can sit Burke down right over Kreischer there. Burke Kreischer on the bonfire. Burke Kreischer joining us. Fuck. Yeah, can we curse on you? Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> you got a big old fucking pint of booze. Are we let's say yeah. dirty words? What the hell is this you brought in here, Burke? Donuts and uh, and vodka. This is cold <laughs> vodka too. Mm. You're trying to throw me off the wagon, dude. It's already chilled. Wagon? Oh yeah, but oh, that's why it's so successful. No. I'll tell you. Who's not, I'll tell you. It's not on the wagon. <laughs> me, me and Lou. Oh. Me and Lou got busted up on vodka on this show. Hey, how was Virginia ago. Beach? Oh, dude, it's so fun. We're just talking about that. He flew in. Yeah, and they, they didn't lost have. His they bag. lost my bag. Now, what I pack in my carry-on bag is my laptop, my PlayStation, my games, and all the cords for that stuff. Yeah. Except. 
for my controllers, I put in my book bag. <laughs> I, 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 I put in my lu- my send it along luggage. Do you pretend you're flying the plane when you take off? Do you pull it out? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying yeah. I, I, I send that in the uh, uh, you know in the plane. I send, yeah. I send it on the bag. I check always, and they send it. So I be I got there. You know, I landed at like ten o'clock at night. I'm doing radio in the morning, but I'm not tired at ten o'clock at night. I'm like, oh, I'll go play video games and just hang out in my hotel room, and then. So I had to go. The guy who picked me up took me to Walmart to go buy a fucking video game controller at eleven o'clock at night. What a hand job I am! <laughs> you know what? Go like at least you only had to buy the fucking controller. At very least, well, I've gone to go if, buy the the cord, and then the, the people who aren't into video games and they're giving you that ride look at you like you're a fucking asshole. You're like, I need a cord to connect my my games to the TV. How am I gonna? I need my games, and it's just like some apathetic woman that works in the club where she's like, "You're on Johnny and the Kid at seven a.m." I'll pick you up outside. I'm like, I need my cord. <laughs> I've never seen this. There was a sticker on the back of the TV that said, "If you hook up a device like a PlayStation or an Xbox." It will destroy this television, and we will charge you eight hundred dollars. Wait, and I was like, that can't be real. That's not true. So here's here's hilarious. That's Virginia rules. Who makes that television <laughs> ever? Yeah, Guys. why would you make it? I mean, here's an HDMI cable, but use it at your own God. risk, dude. I mean, get, like, get, get the fire extinguisher out. God damn it, Johnson! This is the perfect TV. Are there any faults? One. If you hook up a video game system, it will explode. <laughs> but you know what's hilarious? Make it. <laughs> I, I was so dumb in the beginning. Now I'm a big. I'm a real big believer, and I think we uh, are different on this, Dan. Are you let um, housekeeping into your room? Never. Or are you a do not Never. Never. I'm the same Never. way. Uh, they don't fuck with my room. I'm yeah. an every day, get in there. I call for You and for Steve them. Byrne, you guys are like fucking serial killers. You go into their rooms, <laughs> and they're organized, their computer's on the desk, yeah. not on a pillow next to their bed. No, my, my computer's on the pillow. <laughs> Can't, I'm, not but, jerking, I'm not jerking off of some desk. I, I don't see my. You know own, I don't see my batch on that glass on top of the wood. Good dude. luck. That's all. That's exclusively where I jerk off is at the desk. You batch on the glass? Oh, dude, that's where I get my work done. No, I catch it. I got my center field made of napkins that Wait, I. Wait, get. you catch it? No, I. Oh, I, I no, top my it. body can't be doing anything other uh, other than having an orgasm. That's really? like shooting heroin while driving. Yeah. You got to When you have an orgasm, your body needs to be let go, let so, go, just. You, can, you just well listen. I I do that when I'm in the shower, but when I'm at the desk, I cap it. Oh, wow. I learned. I, I, I did is that learn, weird? I did learn that trying. Is, the, that the, is bizarre. I, I did learn trying the hold back load, though. That if you do that, at the end of that, if you release, that's when you get that Peter North distance. Which yeah, but I always. All you're doing for. is all you're doing is putting your thumb over the hose. Wait, hold on. So what's happening is like uh, uh, behind your pee hole, it's just like loading up like tennis balls. Like yeah, <laughs> or Sonic. And when you let it go, it just fires out. Remember when Sonic the Hedgehog would charge up, and then you'd let it go and he'd shoot. Oh hold yeah, on, hold on, hold on. Oh hold yes, on. it's it's the uh, it's the Looney Tunes version of your dick going. <laughs> to hear something new during masturbating, something I've been doing for a solid amount of my life. Yeah, to, I've never capped it you to see capped? if I can shoot it further. Really? Oh, I, so I've never capped it to shoot it further. I cap it in order to to as for cleanup. No, 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 no. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm a purist with masturbating. I literally have to, I have to not. Because okay, now we're getting so we're you, gonna get real. Are you such a purist? You yell out a mantra? <laughs> no, I, no. But I went through this period. Can we get a glass of ice by any chance for some vodka? Absolutely. Um, I, went, I went through this period where oh, I was, whose eyes just fucking I was, lit up. I was having. Lou, you can have vodka. Sure. Yeah. Why not? I was having depression issues. Yeah. And I was fucking psyching myself out of orgasms. Really? I was like, oh, I was like, I'd go to have an orgasm, and I'd be like, well, the problem is, is that. I'm married. I've been married twelve years, thirteen years, and I can't. And, I, and if I had sex, say Monday, I knew I wasn't going to have it again for a few more days. That's just not the way married sex works. You don't just sure. have it all the time. Yeah. And so I was, I was building it up. And then when I was going to have my orgasm, I would, my brain would go, "You're not getting this again for a while. Make it good." And I'd be like, "No," and yeah. then I'd miss it. I'd miss it. They were like reg- regressed orgasms. And really? So, yeah, I've had that before, but with like. When you're like, I'm like, I think I'm about to finish, and then something will happen in the room, like a lamp yeah. will fall, and then I'll be like, yeah, and they're like, all right, just finish. And you're like, <laughs> like I'm like nervous, like I can't, I can't, yeah. I'm, not that I'd go soft, but I'd almost stay hard and be like, all right, well, now I can't, so yeah. now it's just going to be fucking. I've, I've definitely had the unenjoyable where it's like, I'm trying actually not to finish to this particular video I'm watching, 
but it gets too close, and you're like, no, no, no. So you like click off the video, but then at the same time, you're also like, oh, get, yeah, it's oh, half happening. It's over. Oh, it's dude, over. The the hottest, hottest, that, little, that little tiny bit runs down your knuckle. And the you're hottest like, girl I've ever had sex with in my life at the Laughs in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She was, I think she was a call girl, and uh, but she like stayed after the show. We had sex. She, she was your Alabama. She was so, Alabama. Oh. She, was, she was gorgeous, and she and I was like about to, about to finish. We were having sex in the comedy condo, and I was about to finish, and then she's like, "Don't finish yet." And I was like, ah. and it, just, <laughs> "It just like started leaking out of me." Where I was like, "No, God, no!" You're like the waiter with the breadsticks yeah. going. Oh, they already got the meals turning around. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, you guys don't want breadsticks. Oh, yeah, I slipped. Those are my favorite. My favorite orgasms ever were when uh, were when it was a one night stand and it was a premature ejaculation. Those are my favorite. Because oh, they're way early. I love it. I love them so much. I, there's I did, no, there's one, no of the, one, of the, one of the waitresses from the Boston Comedy Club. I'd oh, had, really? Yeah, I had sex with her and I was like, oh, she's going to be pissed. But I was like, I don't care. Ah! <laughs> so that's my question to you about you just, you, you're such a purist with orgasms. If it is a, if you come quick, you're just like, now here it comes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Can you I go love... again right away or no? No. It's a wrap. <laughs> no, it's a wrap. <laughs> we're going to have to, we're going to have to, we're going to have to <laughs> check the gates. Yeah. Gonna, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Guys, someone get some caution tape. I don't need anyone touching this dick for at least 12 hours. You don't even get the like 20 minutes later, like, uh, uh, Harden up I have, again. I have one night. I have one night in question and one song. I had just gotten. Uh, I had just gotten my ass waxed for a TV show I was on, so I was totally bare. Totally bare. Balls, butthole, everything. Everything got waxed. What was the most painful part of that? My asshole. Yeah. They they do your asshole. It's tender. They paint over it and push into it and rip out of your asshole. How? What was? What was? Is that? Was that the worst itch too? What was the worst itch when it no, started no, coming back? Uh, no, that I don't remember that being bad, to be dead honest with you. I actually remember nothing but joy out of that. Like, it was pain doing it. You can find the clip online if you type in Hurt Burt Ass Wax. It is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah. No questions asked. It's, it's a lot of funny half, shit. Half the reason that I've ever worked in this business is that one clip. <laughs> yeah. from a while ago. It's from a long time ago. Yeah, Cher got a hold of it. And uh, this is how long ago it was. Look, in 2001. Wow. Uh, Cher got a hold of it and sp- sent it out to everyone. Like, as like a Christmas. Really? Sent it to everyone. Gave them, de- like, tapes of it. Really? Yeah, it was, it's fucking, go towards the end and you can see me, that's me as a dominatrix gimp. At the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Look how young I am, Jay. It's so weird. I, I knew you at this time. I but know. it's like, I, I would just, I, I would say, I would say you haven't changed at all. <laughs> Isn't that weird? But like, yeah, yeah look at it. I'm like, holy shit. Oh. Yeah. She's wet, waxing my asshole. This will be going out on at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter. You can check this out. Oh, was it just brutally painful? Oh, dude, just it was insane. But that night, I met up with this girl, this girl Rachel. I spent whatever. She was a producer on my show, <laughs> and uh, she, I took her to the bedroom. We were at her house, had partying. I want to say Neil Brennan had been there. Was there? I can't remember, okay. but uh, all I remember is I, it's the first time I heard the word chutzpah. Oh, like, yeah. He has chutzpah. This is in New York. This is in L.A. Oh, okay. And they were like, Neil Brennan has chutzpah. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, he <laughs> does. But, you know what? I, Neil does have chutzpah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And we went back into her bedroom, and there was a there was a Ja Rule song. <laughs> dong, da dong, dong, dong. You know that song? All I think about you. Oh, yeah, what would sure. I do without well, my hey, baby? Yeah. <laughs> what crazy. would I do without you? <laughs> I think I got my hey, baby. <laughs> if I had my butthole wax, you would lick it. I, I played that song. I got fucking wasted. And we went into her bedroom. And I play, I was playing that song. And it was on repeat oh, on, no. the, on the thing. <laughs> and I got... Th- four, three or four blowjobs that night, and I, I, mean, I could not stop getting them. I was like in a zone. I was like, I'd like, like we'd fall asleep, and I'd wake her up, and I'd be like, another one. And she'd be like, I'm back. Call, call, yeah. call. And I'm telling you. You're splashing water on her face like a long fight. <laughs> the best. Yeah, back then, she's like, I'm sucking you. Put the mouthpiece back in. <laughs> I got one more in me. I got one more. You sound, like a, you sound like an athlete telling that story. He goes, I don't know. For some reason, that game, the basket just felt like I was throwing a rock into the ocean, man. Really, I mean, I was just. That night, my dick just kept miss, falling in miss. mouth. I remember, I remember, I'm, I want to say at like four in the morning, I just grabbed her by the back of the head and just suggested it. And like a soldier, she just was like, Colonel gives orders, Lieutenant follows orders. It's the same way when they have like bombing threats where it's like, whap, whap, and a soldier just goes up right for the gun. Like, get the gun, let's get out there. I like the literal, like, uh, like, mind, like mental picture of like, you put your hand behind her head and suggested it, or you put your hand behind her head and went, 
suck my dick? Yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, I mean, your hand's already on my head. That's... Or I feel it was like when a professional wrestler has his enemy by the head and he's going into the turnbuckle and he points at the turnbuckle <laughs> yeah. and he has it by the back of the head. He's like, oh, and they're like, he's going to do it. Yeah. Bert's going to get his fourth yeah. blowjob. You're going for a ride. That was a great someone's, fucking night. When someone I, stop the damn night. To, to, to this day, when I hear that song by Ja Rule, yeah, I get, that night. oh, dude, I think of that night. That album cover was red. So does your wife... Would your wife know this story enough to put on this song randomly as a joke? No, she would not know this song. She doesn't know that story. She doesn't know that. My dick's getting hard right now. <laughs> Crazy. Turn it up. You know what? We were gonna do. We were gonna do Nirvana all day, but we're we're fucking audible at the line. Jaw rule the rest, <laughs> the rest of the, of the show. Well, thank God, there's only two songs. Well, that's it. That's right. Need. Listen to uh, Bell. Were you doing that Bell while you're getting your dick sucked? <laughs> you like your hand in the air, like. Wait, I, you know what I love, and you, and you uh, fucked on this to or to on repeat, on repeat. That's what's so funny about it is like the one song looping. At some point, you you feel like someone would be like, "What the fuck are we doing?" Yeah. Baby. Are all we gonna listen to is this Ja Rule song, <laughs> dude? I'm not even fucking around that. I just got in the TV show. I just moved out to LA. I was making money for the first time in my life, and fall was coming around. I had just bought a truck, a, an expedition, yeah. Eddie Bauer Limited, and I'd wear I was I thought I was I thought I was being different. I'd wear basketball jerseys, a Jason Williams basketball jersey. And I'd fucking guy, drive around with the windows down, listen to this on blast, just being like, that's right, I get hit four times a night. <laughs> Welcome to LA, motherfuckers! <laughs> Someone at a stoplight was like, "Look at that guy over there in that in that jersey. How, how he far get, he gets his dick sucked all the time? How far? Can they even see the jersey? How far back was your seat in that bitch, oh, though? Oh, dude, lean was back, gangster lean, gangster. I couldn't even see over the fucking dashboard. Did you have leather seats? Oh, <laughs> I was making five thousand dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> I did the math wrong and thought I was a millionaire. <laughs> oh, dude. I was like, dude, what? That's like one point three five million dollars. And they're like, you got it. Yeah. They go buy that car. Sure it is. Oh, dude, picking up tabs. I, I tore through that money like I had cancer. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be here in eight months. Fucking make it rain, bitches. Yeah. Me and my buddy Eddie's favorite thing to ever do is we go to strip clubs, and I pull out a 20, and I go, can I get change for a 20? And then pretend you're giving me change for a 20. I just take it and go, throw it in the air. <laughs> right out of her hand, just throw it in the air. That is... Not even towards the strippers, just up in the air. Just for anyone. Get it. Have, have at it. it. You Man, have that to. And then you stand over like, you are all my children now. <laughs> you got to start calling that up. On five oh. grand a week, that's just a funny thing to really like, have. It's like, oh. it's, well, life's totally different now. And, but, and by the way, totally it is. <laughs> it is totally different. But yeah. like, but it's not a million. It's not a million. <laughs> you dri you're driving around have a real internal conflict. Like, why did I hate rich people this whole time oh, now that I am one? I'm it's so, so different. fucking rich. <laughs> goes, Man, it turns out, he goes, I thought I was being a rebel. Turns out I just wanted to sit at the table with the kings. Yeah. And here I find myself. Feast. Feast, you nasty bitches. Here's 21s. He goes, Check out that pinstripe on the Eddie Bow edition. <laughs> By the way, I think you'll notice that the Eddie Bauer signature is right above the door handle. He goes, that's 30 more grand. That pinstripe right there, 30 more grand. Eddie's, Eddie's autograph cost you 5K. <laughs> I was, I would tear, I tried to buy a motorcycle at the time. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Awesome. I was like, uh, I was like, and Brett Michaels, not Brett Michaels, uh, the guy from Molly Crew, Vince was, Neal. Vince Neal was like, "We're doing a run, man. You should do it with us." And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" I, I had never learned how to ride a motorcycle, <laughs> I don't nothing know either. at all. And I went to the Indian dealership, and I was like, "I'm going to take <laughs> what's like your most expensive motorcycle?" And they were like, uh, "This one." I said, "I'll take it." And they were like, "You'll take it." And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Do you have a motorcycle license?" I said, "I do not." And they're like, "We cannot sell you a motorcycle." <laughs> I was like, oh, "I guess I'm not going." To call. Let me call Vince Neal. Tell him I can't make it. <laughs> I was yeah. fucking if, if, out if, of if, my if you just walked at home, they were, <laughs> walked at home next to you. There were a lot of oh. people who they had to make that rule for. Where <laughs> another guy came in and was like, I want the most expensive bike. And they're like, well, there you go, sir. And then three hours later, like, that guy died on the highway. Oh. Do you want to hear something? Remember Pee Wee Herman on the motorcycle? That's what I always think of my first motorcycle ride. would be like, do you have that? Pull that up, Christine. The, okay, the okay. Pee Wee Herman motorcycle get, ride. Get Spanish Caravan by the doors ready. Oh, so, yeah. so, <laughs> so I take What a great fucking... Me. What a great prep. <laughs> so I take take motorcycle riding lessons for uh, I worked for a network for a, a, I work for a network whatever so they give me they tell me to take motorcycle lessons what they tell you when you take motorcycle lessons is hey listen 80% of the fatalities happen due to inebriation for the driver that's 80% right now so if you cut that out you just don't drink and drive you 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 cut out 80 your odds are up 80 
What I I'm sure what you're supposed to hear in that is, hey, don't drink and drive. Yeah. <laughs> what I heard is it must be fucking magical if, if <laughs> everyone it, keeps doing it. Yeah. <laughs> if that's look 80% at the numbers like well, that sounds like those guys are eighty percent. This is happening that much. Those guys are going out doing what they love. <laughs> Just fucking tossed the wind through yeah. your hair. <laughs> hey guys. Hey Debbie, why don't you pour me a stiff one? I'm gonna go out on the highway. <laughs> Helmetless. <laughs> hey, can you get me one of those beer helmets while I'm on my hog? You know what? Everyone says that the tears get in your face, but I feel like if you're hammered, you don't feel it. Oh. I'm not even going to wear glasses. Yeah, I'm, oh. not gonna, I'm not even going to get a bug guard. Yeah. So I, I ride motorcycles. I ride motorcycles for like, I rode them to Sturgis, through Montana, through the Talladega National Forest. I ran, rode them in, in Hawaii. I rode them all over the world. For, I got offered that Black Hills ride. It's uh, in, in Sturgis. It's amazing. But I didn't know how to ride a motorcycle, so I got, they filmed me instead on the back of a 65 year old lady's like trike bike where it's oh. like a big bench seat in the back. Yeah. But it's still oh. it's pretty goddamn amazing. It's fucking <laughs> amazing. And so, but the whole time I did it all sober, I did it all sober. So, cut to, I'm in Vietnam. I'm in Vietnam. Yeah. Where, where, where were you at? Uh, I, River Delta? Uh, yeah. Something were you like co head running with Tom Rhodes? <laughs> <laughs> what are the reasons they're being in Vietnam? Yeah. Fight a war? Was, or war? We were in there to go. We were going to do a six hour hike into the jungle. Is in the world's biggest cave. You type in the world's biggest cave, Vietnam, you'll see it. It's fucking amazing. Filled with bats. Crazy. Hike through the six hours, pit vipers, downhill, uphill, through the. It's like being in an Oliver Stone movie. Six hours in, spend the night in the jungle. Six hours out, we got Sherpas, we got porters, we got everything. And then we get out of the jungle, we get into this bus, we're soaking wet, we're beat, we had a bad night's sleep, we're tired as fuck. I walked 33,000 steps on my Fitbit both days. We get out, we get to our farm stay, and my Sherpa, my, my, has a, uh, he's, I see them all hanging in a circle. I go, hey guys, what's going on? They're smoking hash. Yeah. And they're like, would you like some? I was like, I think I've earned it. <laughs> so, yeah. like, so I take had it. had quite a day. Yeah, I've had it fucking two days. I, I could take a little. You, you, said, you said the word soldier? Yeah. You said the, you said the words pit vipers. Pit vipers. They're snakes, yeah. green snakes that are, uh, poisonous that wrap around trees. So, as you're hiking, when you go to grab a tree, sometimes, it didn't happen to any of us, people will grab the snake. Ah! So Fuck you, so, that shit. So that, that is the, the hike you're on. No. So when you get done and they offer you a bowl of, of hash, you're like, I'll take it. Yeah, that or a gold emulet. It is. I take, <laughs> I take a conservative hit of a highly energetic hash. I feel very good. I then get a big, tall Vietnamese beer. I pound one of those. Open my second one. Take a second hit of hash. Start drinking my second beer. I'm feeling really fucking good. <laughs> and out of the corner of my eye, I see a motorcycle. Oh, God. And I'm like... If there was ever an opportunity to ride, yeah. yeah. So no DUI laws in Vietnam. I'm in the middle of nothing but rice patties. Yeah. It's just rice patties. You're knee deep in the shit. I'm knee deep in the shit. <laughs> Two clicks outside of Dene. Two clicks out of that. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are turning this into a bit. Who's going to stop you, Ho Chi Minh? Yeah. No one's stopping yeah. me. Charlie don't care about motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So, so I, I go to the guy who owns the farm stay. I go, hey, man, I noticed you have a motorcycle. Do you mind if I take it for a spin? He goes, have you been smoking a <laughs> I said, I have. And he goes, perfect. You're going to love it. <laughs> he goes, he goes, play, take Spanish caravan. Get your headsets. Go go up just like like a hundred yards up the into the rice paddies on this like dirt road. Take a left through the rice paddies, and it opens up. It's like a little stretch. It's like a quarter of a mile. You can open it up. It's totally safe. It's flat. It's 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 a bridge. It's an earthen bridge. It's been there for a hundred years. He goes just. Listen to Spanish Caravan by the doors and fucking open it up. He this goes, sounds like something I want to go do. So, so I take the motors. I go. I go. You have a helmet. And he goes. You don't want one. <laughs> you don't want one. He goes. Let let it let it be. You're out there. And so I get headsets. I get my fucking thing. I op I go to the thing. Hit Spanish Caravan. Tell me if this isn't <laughs> right. I take it. I cut into the two rice patties. Yeah. I, s I settle. I look at it. The sun's setting. There's oxen on each side. Birds are sitting on top of the oxen's head. And I'm like, here we go. I fucking click it down to first gear. Fucking hit it. And open it up. Boom, 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 boom. And I start getting like 10 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. And I'm fucking hauling ass, and I'm having the most spiritual moment of my fucking life. I can feel my face splitting earth, splitting time, <laughs> splitting space. My hair is racing. Oxes are looking at me like, you're a bad motherfucker, Burkreiser. The fucking, the sun's winking at me. I'm like, this is what it's about. This is what life's about. I'm feeling it. This is what love's about. You're vulnerable. You're all the fun's happening between your legs. And all of a sudden, cut it. My phone rings. And I'm brought back to earth. 
And I look at it, and it's Joe Rogan. <laughs> I go, hello? And he goes, powerful Burt Kreischer, what are you doing right now? I go, uh, I'm high as fuck riding motorcycles <laughs> through rice paddies in Vietnam. And he goes, you're a bad motherfucker. <laughs> he goes, listen to me. These life experiences you have, you have to remember every fucking single part of them. He goes, this is what stand-up's about. Fuck Travel Channel, fuck that. He goes, you go out and you live these things and write about them on stage. Bring them back to life. And I was like, I will. And he goes, I'm not going to take you any more time. So I'm like, okay. So I fucking get off the phone with him, crank it up, Spanish bearing it comes back in. I'm just... Now I'm turned around and I'm going back and I see my shadow racing me. My shadow's in front of me. And I'm like this total Peter Pan moment. I really am Peter Pan. And I'm flying. I'm like, fuck yeah! I'm literally holding on thinking if I let go, I'm going to die. And my wife calls. <laughs> she immediately is like, what are you doing? I was like, it works so well with Joe. <laughs> he was so supportive of this idea. <laughs> so he goes, everyone in the world understands why this is a fantastic thing to do. <laughs> I go, I'm high as fuck riding motorcycles and race pennies in Vietnam. She goes, get the fuck off the bike. <laughs> She's like, you're not the machine. You're a father of two. You have high blood pressure. Go home. <laughs> and I just fucking walked him home. I walked the bike home. What happened? Because what happened to a man enjoying life? <laughs> He's better half call. Oh. Tell him to stop. Oh. Joe, Rogan, Joe Rogan gives you his most spiritual answer. He goes, "These are the moments where you open up your soul and you Joe. find out the true makings of a man." Oh. Joe, and your wife's like, "Moron, oh. get off the bike, you idiot!" Eighty-five oh. percent of people die like this. <laughs> he was like, "For the first, this is how people die." You know the statistics. It's the most reason people die. <laughs> It's the, 80, it's the 80 percentile. This is how you're going to die. You're not like a condom in Haiti. Like, what the fuck? Oh, fuck. Uh, the best part is that night, I go I go back to the farm stay. I get the bike back. He's like, did you fall? I was like, no, my wife called. And, so, and then I couldn't, like, crank it back up. My energy was kind of zapped. She's like, we have an IEP meeting with Isla's teachers tomorrow. You've got to fly from Vietnam to L.A. So I get into bed. Uh, I get in bed and the fucking owner of the, uh, this is, I swear to God, true. Owner of farm stay, I'm in bed. He comes into my room at like 2 a.m. 2 a.m. He opens my door. He's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm like, I'm okay. Sits at the foot of your bed. Yeah, he's, he's in my room. He's in my fucking room. And I'm like, uh, are, is everything okay? You having a bad dream, buddy? He's, he's like, he's like, I know you kind of bummed out about the wife phone call and everything. I thought you could use this. And he leans over to my bed and he hands me a puppy. What? <laughs> I swear to fucking God. An emotional he a, pet? He goes, no, a puppy. No, I'm saying like, something yeah. to make you feel better. He goes, he's like, I thought you could use this to cuddle with. And I was like, fuck, thank you. <laughs> and I cuddled with a puppy. Like a <laughs> hey, buddy, you sleeping? Well, this squirmy little thing I got right here, this is Reginald. Yeah, he's like, your new best is, friend. This oh. is Nigel. He's <laughs> never made me feel sad. You know what he does? He rides in a basket on the front of the motorcycle when I take my spirit drives. Oh. Here you get home and tell Rogan the story, and he goes, I never called you. Here's, here's, whenever you want to defend yourself doing something dumb, you always believe that I call you. It's your phone is right. You're talking in a dial tone. And, <laughs> and you're, you're right, Joe. These are the moments we I live love for. You. Joe, I'm so free. I am the powerful bird. He's, uh. like, he's like, you realize I was calling UFC fight at that exact moment. <laughs> What? Oh, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan's your spirit animal. That's oh. great. You're flying, Bert. Get on the front of the bike. <laughs> Stand up. Stand, Stand up on the motorcycle. Oh. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Eighty percent of uh, people who die on, on motorcycle fatalities were uh, were drunk and driving. Because thirty percent of those people were standing on the bike at the time. Twenty <laughs> percent thought they got a call from Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> That's the question they asked. They go, uh, Hey, Birch, Joe yeah. Rogan, go faster. Yeah. You think you could do a wheelie into that rice paddy? <laughs> oh. That little patch of dirt looks like a cool ramp. Oh. Dude, can you hang out with us for a bit? I'm not, yeah, I, I was going to hang out forever. Fuck Ride yeah. it out, dude. Let's okay. do it. We'll be right back, everyone. For Kreischer, it's the bonfire. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It's the Bonfire on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Uh, our guest is Burt Kreischer. I'm guessing is somewhat hard from us playing this song? Kind of. Oh, I love, man, it, I, it brings me right back there. Like, <laughs> I love that. Hardcore. Really? 
You know what's funny is I have an Outcast mix on my phone. It's just all the Outcast albums, and I hooked up with a girl to it. And now whenever I'm on it, I'm like, oh, I remember this point when this song was playing. I remember yeah. exactly. But you just have one song, so all the memories are just all in one. So, so what I did, you want to hear something even crazier than that? So this past, we were just in Montreal, right? Yeah, I don't know if you knew this, but I was going through like a weird place in my head. No. Like I just was in a bad fucking spot. And there's a song by Twenty One Pilots called yeah. called. Do you know the song I'm talking about? I know Twenty One Pilots. I saw my concert. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. So they have a song called Stressed Out. Uh huh. And I was listening to it a bunch that week. And I just was in a place where I was like, I miss my family. I was I was on the road, and I was like, and every time I heard that, it depressed me. It's just a. And I, and I also have this feeling like that I'm not young anymore. Like I kept being in Montreal going like, like look at uh, fucking all these young, like what's the kid's name, the black kid that just got fired from SNL? The, um, Jay Farrow. Jay Farrow. It's like he's young, he's got his whole career in front of him. I'm 43, like like I, I don't know anyone in the business anymore. Like in a weird way, I'm like, I always feel like an outsider. I always feel like an outsider. Oh, and, you know, me too. I get that. I get the same we thing. Talk, too. I, we I'm, talked sorry, about I'm, this. I'm 38, I'm, I'm going to be 39 in like, you know, less than two months and stuff. And you get this. Yeah, you always start to feel the thing. You're like, oh, wow. like, And you don't. You don't see it happen. It just happens one day. You don't day. know what happens. One day, I said before, when like young comics come up, like, in, like the new guys who they're doing something good, like they have a sitcom or something, they go, hey, man, I'm like a huge fan of yours. Like, what? Oh. <laughs> I'm, like, Dude. I'm like, I thought we were competing for a thing. And it's like, oh, no. Like, I am would play your this fucking... This is the line right here. And I was like... To the good old days. So, when it's, I'm, 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 and I'm thinking, all I'm thinking is like, we're having breakfast every morning, and Kevin Hart won't even speak. Not won't even speak to us, but like, he's in a different place in his life. And then I'm like, man, this is so fucked up. And yeah. I got really almost sad about, like, what do I do next? I know I'm do I did a special. I'm proud of it. Comes out November 11th on Showtime. Oh. But, uh, um, but I'm proud of it. I've got a scripted series I'm working on, but I just don't know where I'm at in my life. And then, and the song would, dip, and I couldn't get it out of my head. It was making me depressed. So I, t I told my daughter, my oldest daughter, about it. I just was like, and she just very candidly said, well, you know what you need to do? You need to do listen to that song with me and Isla when we're doing something fun, and then you'll always remember it that way. And I went, wow. Are you my fucking kid? Profound. Yeah. I was like, shut the fuck up. Can we get high? It's yeah. profound. She's like, Dad, I'm already on it. Yeah. She's Those like, Fruit Loops are laced. She's like, Dad, what we have to do is change your Pavlovian yes. response. Yes, yes. Father, and you but, react differently. But then, but this this little conniving little girl yeah. is like, let's go to the trampoline park and listen to it. She just wants to go to the trampoline park. Yes. So, your daughter is going to be a criminal mastermind. We listen to this all day, and now when I hear this song, I think of that day we all went to the trampoline park in Arizona. So it actually worked. Work. Yeah, it totally worked. So you can totally take a song that makes you sad and just do something fun. Yeah, let me get one hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a button Wake on up, it right there. You need to make money. What? I went with, uh, you know Justin Edbrook, right? Yes, 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 I went yes. with him, like, when I was in L.A. one day, and he goes, hey, he goes, uh, 21 Pilots is, like, this new, like, hot band that, like, it's, it's, like, the biggest ticket right now on the road. Like, you know, I have two tickets if you want to go, just go see it, go get some dinner and go see it. Um, me, him, and Christine went out for dinner, and then Christine had to leave. She was flying out that night, uh, so she had to leave, so the only person that would make sense more to be at this concert... <laughs> And then me and uh, Justin had my agent, who's just a big, big galoot also. Just me and him surrounded by 12 to 16-year-old girls freaking the fuck out. And, it's, <laughs> and we're just going to sit there with our arms folded like, I, I mean, I guess it's good. It's the good, drums are good. Drum riff is good. <laughs> uh, it is interesting. There's two of them. There's only two guys in the yeah, band. Yeah, I always love that, man. It's I a saw track. It's a track. And the guy, the drummer wails, man. I saw uh, White Stripes at the Ma at Madison Square Garden, and I was like, oh, I'm excited to see their packing band. And then it was just Jack and Meg White, and you're like, oh, fuck. Like, uh. they play. Oh, they, see, I uh, saw the Black Keys like that, and they do have a band. Yeah, they do. I, I saw them really? the Yeah, I saw them at Barclay, and they had a bassist and a keyboardist. Mm -hmm. But Jack White and Meg White just played those two. Best live show I've ever seen, No Questions Asked, is Modest Mouse. Really? really? Destructive. Played it. This sounds silly, but played it just like you wanted to hear it on the album. Oh. Identical. It was almost like it was a... That's like, kind of great. I do like... That was a great so old David Spade awesome. joke about... Uh, yeah, the, like the, the Hollywood like, talking through. No, but, no, but in a special, actually, from Arizona, where he's like oh, talking through... 
He's like, R.E.M. He's like, we're here to talk about it. He goes, just play Automatic for the people and make it sound like the album. No tricks. <laughs> no funny stuff. Christine, you were nodding your head, Modest Mouse. They were great. Where'd Talking you see Mike, You have a microphone. Oh, uh, yeah. They, I saw him at the, the Will Turn in Los Angeles right when Hold that on. album. Hold on. I saw him at the Will Turn at Los was Angeles. Was it right when the Float On album came yes. out? Yeah, we were probably at the same show. It was the greatest yeah. show I've it ever been amazing. to. It was amazing. It was. I literally have been looking for them to start touring again. They haven't toured since. It's the album. Oh. Are we becoming best friends right now? <laughs> Wait a so minute. Funny. Did we... you go to the bathroom halfway through Bukowski? <laughs> I was going to piss. I know you. That's the good people. Good news for people. Oh. A stranger gave me, handed what me a, a beer. What a fucking album. Yeah, it is. It actually, I'll tell you this. Good news for the people who like bad news for Modest Mouse. Dude. is a fucking fantastic Dude, you want to know something weird? I literally at lunch today walked by Radio City Music Hall and thought to myself, out of nowhere, I go, I oh, remember when I saw Modest Mouse. Modest Mouse here like 10 years ago. Swear to God that happened to me today. And it was That's great. Amazing. I saw him right across Best the street. Show. And I thought about that earlier. Jay, I'm, you'd love it because the singer smokes while he plays piano. It's so cool. That is, that is like badass. I'll tell you, I would never, I've tried. I can't do the uh, recorded songs of Mumford and Sons at all. Huh? If I saw him in Bonnaroo, we saw him in Bonnaroo. Dude, I was, They're great life. I was blown the fuck away by them. You know what's funny, man? The guy's playing drums, singing, and smoking a cigarette. And he's a, just like a badass oh. dude. A band that I they think they've got a couple good songs, but I saw him at Lollapalooza about five years ago. Fucking Vampire Weekend had great. one of the best sets where I was standing in the middle of it like, these motherfuckers are having the set of Lollapalooza. They just fucking went balls out. And you're like, these, these guys just performed their ass. He was up on the stack. He was like, you know, like one of those performances where you're like, man, this guy really gives a shit. About that, it's like the war on drugs. Like you just kind of, right. but you just zone into the music of that. Yeah. That's more just like a music. Yeah, but Vampire there's, there's Weekend. No, there's no energy to it necessarily. Like, I love when you, I love when you, um, you get an album and then you don't, and then you listen to it. And you're like, man, eh, it's okay. And then, uh, like three months later, it just starts playing. And you're like, oh fuck, I slipped on this album. Yeah. Like this is a great album. Like I'm trying to think of the one. I'm trying to think of the one. Uh, oh. Dawes, D A W E S. Yeah, I've heard. So I, I Andy Merkface just went nuts for that. I like Dawes a lot, dude. I listened to it. The fish head though, I, right there. Are, oh, yeah. Are you a jam band? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've worked in the southern, uh, south in the south. That's that, I we didn't all, know. dude. I saw widespread panic in a room nice. full of three hundred people. I saw Dave Matthews at the Cow House or the Milk Bar in Tallahassee <laughs> with maybe one hundred fifty people. That's they, crazy. And, before and, they were known. Uh, before, yeah. <laughs> you actually, you're, you're, you're actually, your age is uh, right in the wheelhouse of in Florida. Did you see like young Marilyn Manson? Uh, no, because that wasn't my my vibe. What we got was um, there was a oh man, I wish I could remember more of the names, but like Derek Trucks was coming through there, but no one knew who he was. You think he was like ten or twelve, <laughs> and and so uh, but yeah, I, I was listening to Dawes. I'm so. Uh, just to justify, I fell off a waterfall and fucked up my back, and I was I was addicted to oxy for like a it's month like and a half. Eighty percent of people who fall off waterfalls are drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I was repelling. Yeah. In the middle of repelling, Joe Rogan called me and said, yes. "This is what it's about, Bert. He goes, "Repelling down waterfalls, baby. Uh, he goes, let go, uh, embrace. Yeah, let that rope. You know that rope in your hand? Let it go. <laughs> you don't need it. You're a, you're a powerful motherfucker, you're a mighty Bert. Motherfucker, Bert. Mighty Bert. Mighty Bert. Mighty, mighty Bert Crusher." So I, I go my wife, my wife got me a told me to get a marijuana prescription for L.A. So I got one, and I and I smoked a lot of wa weed, and then uh, like probably I'd say maybe a month ago is whenever we were supposed to start doing the funnier die tour. Okay, remember they canceled dates? Yeah, yeah. So they canceled dates, and I was home, and I was just like, and and they canceled all the dates I was on, so I was home for like the whole month. I just didn't, and I didn't ended up stopping drinking, and obviously stopping smoking marijuana. Yeah, and so I just. And then I realized, oh man, I've been using marijuana to kind of help with depression or whatever, or just or just right the boat on a on a low day. You right the boat, mm -hmm. and so I, and then I was like, wow. So I've been away from weed. Then I get this Dawes album, and I got I go to this my buddy Cowheads Cruise. I hear Dawes for the first time, and then no hit, type in when the tequila oh, when Cowhead the, from Tampa. Yeah, right. When yeah. the tequila runs yeah, out, Mike Calta, great guy. Yeah, fucking love Mike Calta. He's it's his show. It's Cowhead, and so I go to the, my our friends the Grusins. And we were having a good time, and someone's like, "We should go get wine." And so I was like, "I have a one hitter. I have this like Pax pen, and I take a hit, and I'm walking through L.A., and I'm and I and I just got high for the first time in like in like a month. Oh, it's a nice one. And and I just went. Everyone that greeted me was moving slow and <laughs> oh God, you're gonna get me on. You're gonna get me on this album from this story. Yeah, and and I'm just like the trees. It's like I can see all the individual leaves. 
And I'm like, fuck, oh, man. Fuck, I'm, I'm listening to how this sounds. I'm like, ah, I'm going to download this goddamn album. And it's album like tonight. flip-flops, the perfect pair of cargo shorts, <laughs> Hawaiian shirt, and sunglasses on. And you're like... You just described my favorite music is stoned walking around a city. In cargo Dude, shorts. This is I love the greatest. Short. And, then, and then you get into the grocery store, and all of a sudden you're walking to the pace of the music like you're almost dancing, yeah. and people know you're cool. Yeah. <laughs> You feel that? You feel that? Like when you walk through the produce and you feel the cool air hit yeah. you a little bit too. You're like oh, the cool I'll take air. A sample of a plum. <laughs> Thank you. And then this is it. We'll be drinking champagne. All I bought was tequila and champagne. <laughs> And you're like, see, and, and and so there's so many times where rappers catch shit for like how what they rap about, but then you realize there's dudes listening to it that are feeling it the way you're feeling this song, where they're like, fuck yeah, I want rims, I want Dude. gold teeth, I want to feel the oh, shit. I'm gonna there's fight. there's a part of this song, and this is like, I mean, just like, it's the beauty of like great music connecting with drugs, connecting with your brain, with a dump of serotonin that hasn't been around for a while. Oh man, and you just like, and you can, you can like. Close your eyes and visualize it. Like I now, I want to be a, like a music video director. Uh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? I do know, dude. I've directed so many music videos on the subway. Oh, oh in just my head, what I would do. I'm like, well, oh, they should clearly. I wonder who I talked to about getting this ball rolling. <laughs> dude, probably. I've got. I need to probably reach out to Metallica. I wish let I had know the I wanted... but Neil Brennan had. <laughs> yeah. This is the best line. Turn it up. This is me through the produce aisle. Ladies and gentlemen, we've begun the initial descent. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! This is Shut a, the fuck up! This is an edible on a plane album. Oh, when the tequila runs out, we'll be drinking champagne. This is why I'll never quit drinking. Uh, this is making me want to drink I, again. If you haven't, I, all, this is all I ask from you guys. I love you guys. I love yeah. you guys. All I ask is that if they have an intervention with me, you guys just walk in and with this on your phone and just play it up in the air with a bottle of oh, champagne. I'll say anything. I'll do the say anything yeah, for say you. Say anything. Just say anything. 100. percent But then, the, as the surprise with my left hand is going to be a bottle of tequila, yeah. and I'm going to go. I'm back too. I'm back, baby. We're and then with that last drop, hit your tongue. <laughs> I'll throw up the champagne. Yeah. And then I'm going to look at everyone who'll hold the intervention. And go, I don't even part of you motherfuckers anyway. And then, <laughs> and then your crying daughter's gonna be throwing things at Jay and I going, Get out! Get out! <laughs> he was riding on a motorcycle at 100 miles per hour through rice paddies. He go, needs this. I'm gonna go, Hey, Bert, check your phone. There's a missed call from Joe Rogan. JR. <laughs> JR's hit me up. Yes, the powerful Joe Rogan has a missed call for him. Rogan kicks open the door, no shirt on, khakis. You're a bad motherfucker, Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Let's go do kettlebells. <laughs> Draw! <laughs> Draw! <laughs> like you, you walk Dude. out of the intervention and just pacing around, like talking to imaginary Joe Rogan again. <laughs> what do I do, man? Everyone's telling me I gotta stop. Bert, you just gotta go out there and live life, baby. Rogan grabs you by the shoulders. Climb the he building. Goes, he goes, I bought a compound up in fucking Santa Barbara. We're all moving up there. Joey's got a lot. You've got a lot. Ari's got a lot. Tommy's got a lot. We're going, man. Are you ready? Duncan's bringing the horses. Let's go. <laughs> he does the, uh, he does the 25th hour, Dad. Yeah. Remember Brian Cox? He's like, he's like, Right now, oh, me and you. I we'll get in the car. Oh, what a great fucking analogy. Yeah. We'll get in the car. Oh, shit. We'll get the fuck out of and here. And I visualize it. I'm <laughs> visualizing it. We drive For up. 60 years old with his, with his wife. Yeah. They're just living in great by and, under and, different names. He became a school teacher for a little while. I got us all puppies. <laughs> yeah. And Bert, you never come back to the city. You promise never come back to the city. <laughs> you will know that I love you because oh, I've sent you on this journey. Oh. He just gets you the fuck out of there. <laughs> um, let's take our last break so we can come back and... Take now I'm visualizing ride it out. to this song, Burt moving up to Joe Rogan's compound, a la 25th hour. I would have really uh, seen Burt more as like ACDC or something like that kind of guy. Uh, oh, head, oh, oh so. we got another song in us. Oh, well, all right, let's do it. Uh, we, we, we come back. We come back. We come back. We don't take any more breaks. Fuck it. The music's just Kreischer music. It's the machine music. I'm having so much all fucking day. fun. <laughs> when do you go to four nights a week? <laughs> <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope soon. Um, we will be right back, everybody. We're hanging out with Burt Kreischer. It's the bonfire. Oh, we're oh, all right. Hey, listen to the bonfire, folks, on Sirius you, with uh, Big Soda and Dan Okerson. You are listening to the bonfire. Oh, right. Yes, you are. Good choice, campers. Uh, Ed, say your names. Oh, oh right. right, right. All right. I'll no one, start, no one you cares about in. us. All right. Hey, this is Joe List, and that's Mark Norman here. And you're listening to the bonfire <laughs> on YKWD Radio. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. We're back with the bonfire. A little bad co. Yeah. I never saw them live. What a love to. Smile and wave goodbye. It's the Machine Monday. All music from Burt Kreischer. I'm going to do be I'm going to be doing a Sirius XM takeover on their classic rock station. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Oh, dude, my list is is fuck. You know I did like a I did like a pilot for Sirius XM but without them knowing they didn't know they signed me to a pilot. <laughs> but I I did a pilot high as fuck or drunk. Let's just say I was inebriated and uh, in my man cave and I just wanted to be like an old wolfman jack guy. Yeah. But oh. just give you like inspirational like uh in- inspirational quotes. Like, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Watch. Like, this is what my I would love. Like. I really have like a, not a, a dreams the wrong words. It's probably, I guess, to some degree, like attainable. But I want so bad to just like play music and talk about it. Yeah. For like, let's do this. Let's, give me an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, you let's know. do an audition. Okay. Let's do it. We're gonna play. Let's find the song uh, "Rocky Mountain High." Yeah. By Joe Walsh, and we'll all hit the post. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, that's, that's tough. So, uh, the post is tough sometimes. Yeah, especially oh, Rocky I, Mountain High. I, got I, this. I don't really know the post on Rocky Mountain High, but I do have. But Dan's got Dan's done music radio. I'll tell you this. Done music oh, radio. Let me just show you. Dan's I, I, on a whole. Bunch. You want you want to you want to start it? But now with that, I'll give you mine that I know the post I'm going to hit. All okay. Right? Okay. Do Smashing Pumpkins today? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So we can do oh, the that's post. A really good one. Yeah. Okay. Who starts? I'm going to start. Are you okay. gonna we I don't are really know. I'm going to try to go back. It's got to be inspirational. Yeah, I'm going to try to go back and remember the post. I haven't done this in my about My goal in this 10 is, years. is for you to inspire me to kill my my vodka. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do go it. Whenever. I want to try to hit a post. There we go. Also, don't always forget, life moves forward. <laughs> Damn it's six! It's six! Why did I pick that one? <laughs> it's the wrong one. It's six seconds. <laughs> Four, five, six. That was a quick one. Yeah, that was the one where you go. That was the one where when you were stoned in the commercial break and you saw it, yeah. you're like, hold on, let me do a quick break, and you'd be like, it's ninety two point one and one oh one point three, KFMA, Tucson's new rock. Oh, that's when you had to do it? Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Let me show you how I, I, I tried to do it for this. I, mean, I, I tried to do it right before the words, the first word. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me Rocky see, Mountain a, High. A real good post, you can hit like that, and yeah. then you're just like, you're gone. Give me Rocky Mountain High. I'll show you how I hit posts. And by the way, I sing with the song. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe. I'll just start talking. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you get on an airplane and everyone's looking at you like you don't belong in first class, but it doesn't matter. Take a look out the window. You're high in the sky. We all belong together. That's right. Pull the sleeves of your sweatshirt up and show them you're wearing a presidential Rolex. You belong wherever you want to believe. Wave down that steward and say, I'd like a double jack on the rocks with a Heineken chaser. No one tells me what the fuck to do. That's right. This is our life. We're the same. There's not one person that belongs in front of everyone except for you because you're in first class baby let me tell you something we're flying high over Colorado and I want you to know that you're loved I love you you love me you all I feel like I'm turning into a Jackson 5 song <laughs> kill that drink all right yeah 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 Rocky Mountain Way oh, man oh man oh, fuck. couldn't get much higher that's great Oh, this is the best! I this is the best thing I've ever done in my adult life. Is what? <laughs> that right now, <laughs> I've never felt more at home doing anything in my entire life. It's great. I love. It. I gotta say, it's very amazing. liberating. I like being in the ear and the what are, me and what me are you and Dan. Do? What post are you gonna do? Because let, let me tell you, I forgot wh- which Smashing Pumpkin song it was. It was 1979. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 19, that's the one that's great. It was the 1971. You want to do another one? Do I need some reverb. Can I do one? I want to do some. Here's the thing there's, there's not going to be any. Do you have a song you want to do? Talk. Yeah, do Fire on High, E L O. Oh. <laughs> By the way, if you're listening to this show, I've done radio my whole adult life for 17 years. You are getting a magical gift. This is so much fucking fun. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. This, this is so, so much yeah. to me, fucking dude. fun. Yeah, that's the best. Okay, ready? Ready, ready Joe? Give you I some, need some reverb. Jay, you got it. Get it, Jay. Oh, I feel like it's going to be so much of this for I was waiting for the... <laughs> I like how he starts out of the post. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, no, hey, you're listening to the Pulse of Pennsylvania, <laughs> WPPP. I'm Big J Okerson. You guys are here to rock out. Are you feeling a little ELO? Are you feeling a little fire on high? Wait for it. Not quite yet. <laughs> feel it. Get your drinks out. Fill them up. 
Rip a couple of Hollywoods off the table. Because we're about to party, instrumental style. This, this song never kicks in. <laughs> I thought I was going right, because uh, this song was always my favorite, so I wanted to like, talk over it all when it finally kicks in. Yeah. Can you skip ahead, Lou, at all? <laughs> yeah, this is the best part. <laughs> uh, can you imagine, if you, were, if you were driving that for motivation, and you're like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah, what's he doing? He's got to talk over the spirits and what? evil voices in am the I being a, Am I being abducted? <laughs> yeah, he's Oh, it's standing like what the bedroom and poltergeist yeah. sound like when like oh, God, they just go in there and the toys are all talking. Is, is my house is my house built on an Indian burial ground? Is it ever kicking in? <laughs> yeah. It just Holy shit! Oh my Christ! It's got organs. Wait, it's coming soon. Let me check it out. Give me some reverb, Lou. <laughs> New York City! I know you're driving home after a long day of work. You wish you could be right where you want to be right now in front of that TV with a fine lady. Having yourself a tall boy. Smoking a little weed. It's all about having a party out here on WPPP, the p -p 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 Pulse of Midtown. <laughs> this song is so fucking epic. Dude, you have... I always want to be the introduced. He goes, a six foot guard from Villanova. Oh, that's even the best. Do we, if we do sports announcements, <laughs> yeah. kick on 79. Kick on 1979. Kick on 1979. Can you skip forward a little bit? Hold on. Here it is. <laughs> Can you skip oh, forward? I almost threw up twice during that. <laughs> Oh, no, that's not a good one. Fuck, I'm trying to think of a good sports one. Fire on high, ELO. Oh, no, that was too much. I got it. Here we go. You got a different one? Sports announcement. <laughs> okay. You have a list of I songs? Mean, this is, Lou, this is a clear one. And while, while Bert's looking, do a Beastie Boy sabotage. For a sports announcement? Oh, yeah. What? Are you kidding me? Go for it's your dream, buddy. <laughs> this is how this is how I'd get my okay, fucking team geeked up. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. It's for freestyle swimming. That's what Dan grew up knowing. Yeah, this my mom's boyfriend was a uh, over fifties swim swim uh, swimmer. He was a master. He was in the master swimmers. Really? Yeah, it was really traumatic. I just make Dan go to see his mom, mom's boyfriend. My mom used swimmies. to drag me to over fifty swim meets when I was twelve years old. Oh, I had that's to sit. Be fun. No, I, I had to sit in an indoor pool just and watch like, grown men. Just smells like old dick, <laughs> chlorine and dick. I really, I wish we could have this show where every we just go back through the entire oh. year of Bonfire so far and just retell our stories to Bert because yeah. his reactions oh. make me enjoy it all over again. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to tell on you. I go, ooh, Dan's mom used to bang swimmers and then he had to hang around the locker room with a bunch of 50-year-old dicks swinging in his face. Oh. 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 Oh, Ready, shit. brother? Go. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the worst thing to do. Uh, here we go. 50 and over Master Swim League presents... The Gold League, four by one. He's 53 years old, works as a postman, Ronald Hughes. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, wow. That was good. I don't was know good. if I can beat that. <laughs> I told you. I don't think that's... All right, all right, all right. That's here we a go. post. <laughs> See if you can find Big Black Train by Maxim Ludwig and the Santa Fe Seven. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Let's go, let's go, uh, let's go. N words in Paris, Jay Z. That's such a different gesture, <laughs> Leaf. <laughs> but in the vein of that, no, not that. Yeah, we're going to go. N words in Paris. Let me, let me hear a little bit of it first so I can get my oh, timing. This out. is great for sports. Yeah, yeah. One song, oh, yeah. one song. Only. Okay, okay. Sure. Okay, yeah. you got start it. it over, start it over, start it over. Okay. Reverb? Do you want reverb? Oh, yeah. What sport am I playing? Uh, whatever you want to do. You pick it. I did 40. I did 15 over swim league. So okay. you can pick whatever you uh, want to do. NFL, NBA is always. Equestrian. Yeah. You can do equestrians, a, a competitive okay, equestrian. A competitive equestrian. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to skate to one song, one song only. Ladies and gentlemen, coming out of the side 
of the course is Sparkles and his owner, Bert Kreischer. Kreischer 43. He's been riding horses for two years, but he's gotten really good. Let's hear it for Sparkles and Kreischer. Yeah. Maybe I should have gotten a different sport. Here I go. <laughs> Let's go. I'm doing girls uh, uh, junior varsity badminton. Nice. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh let's go invisible touch. Nice. Ooh, interesting choice. <laughs> that is fucking great. It, yeah, especially girls. I'm have to make I'm have to make up uh yeah, that's I'm, I'm have to make a position. It's, it's legally questionable. Girls volleyball. I'm the coach. Invisible touch. <laughs> <laughs> Penn State football. Yeah. <laughs> Ready, buddy? Yes. Hey Chicago, how you feeling out there? I'd like to formally introduce you to our brand new flanker out of the great state of West Virginia. Her name's Dorothy, and she knows her way around a shuttlecock. Shut up! That was fucking great. That was great. Dang it. All right, give me another one. Uh, give me uh, uh, White Zombie Thunder Kiss 65. Oh, Ooh, but, but again, you have to leave out the... We'll just see about that, Jack. Oh, you're going to talk over that. Oh, well, yeah, no, yeah, that's the one. I, I don't... Oh, with the... Uh, you're talking the about the album version. It starts with, like, they're changing channels and a thing, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, hold on oh, real quick. that's fucking good. Hold on real quick. Uh, <laughs> let, what, what should I do, competitive uh, ski jumping? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. welcome to the German ski jumping competition. Number one from Frankfurt. Give it up for Heinz Sherman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back here in Munich. <laughs> All right. Bachman Turner Overdrive. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> you? Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm getting chipped in a circus jump. Canadian Football League in 1970. <laughs> For who? Which team? The uh, Edmonton, Edmonton Eskimos. Eskimos. Oh, yeah! That's the only club we've all played. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm all about the Argonauts. <laughs> That's the only one we've all played. <laughs> okay, you ready? Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? We got a great team coming out. I want to give it up first for Derek. His name's Campbell. Derek Campbell. Come on, Derek Campbell. Okay. As running back... Derek's good for me. <laughs> Sorry. 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 It's football. Okay. Can I get a moose head up here? <laughs> Somebody? Hockey, hockey, moose knuckle. Somebody? So okay. Oh, fuck. I think the wheels have come off with my... my uh... Dude, we could do this. Do a Big in Japan by Alphaville. Damn it. This I is just, great. I just spit vodka up my nose. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Oh. Ready? Yes. Hey, welcome out to International Soccer League. Soccer very new to country, but we advance very quickly because we practice. We work hard, we show the respect. Welcome. Wait, it's not over yet. Your first player, Sing Zuzi. Welcome, show great honor. Show your respect. Way to go, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Uh, I watched, play, play I watched Kalinka. I watched Kalinka. Karate Kid 2 today. <laughs> What's that? I watched Karate Kid 2 today. Ah, it's the best one. Kalinka. Actually, no, it's not. I take that back. Obviously, number one's the best of all time, but number three is number two. I like Mike Barnes. I See if you can find Kalinka. I wish we could do this for five more go. hours. Yeah. Okay, let's go. No, that's not it. How would you spell Kalinka? Uh, in Russian? <laughs> oh, that's a oh, tough one. Kalinka, 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 Moya. Tadusradu, Kalinka, Kalinka, Moya. It sounds like you're trying to do Kalima. 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 Bert just pulled out Jacob's heart. Oh, oh fuck. Dude, we have to go. This why? 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 Who's, who's next? Can we just take their time? Comedy Central's uh, catalog. <gasps> Are you going to start? I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, you're better than Russian accent, aren't you? <laughs> Introducing number one fencing team from St. Petersburg. His father went missing at six. His mother had him at 13. Give it up for Igor Romanov. God damn it. Whoa! 
I listened to this all the time when I was in Russia. <laughs> and I would do this for the Russian mob all the time. <laughs> and they would laugh hysterically. I just make up words that I thought were Russian. <laughs> and then they come back, oh, Guys, my hour like special airs on Showtime, November 11th at 10 p.m. It's called The Machine. If you want to hear about the time I robbed a, uh, robbed a train with the Russian Mafia, <laughs> it's on that special. Here we go. The impressive thing is, much like Rocky IV, Bert turned those Russians around, and now they're on his team. <laughs> by the end, by the end, they were chanting the machine. The machine, the machine. November 11th, showtime. Bert Kreischer's the machine. 10 p.m. Uh, check that out, man. He, Bert is literally one of the, best one of the people funniest human beings I've ever met in my life, and, and absolutely one of the best people I've ever met in my life. Uh, I am very proud to know him, man, and I'm saying, please, please. Watch a special of the machine. Do yourself a favor. He is awesome. Uh, anything, else you wanna, uh, anything else you want to plug? It. I'm on the road. If you want to find me on the road, uh, your, I, I tell everybody who will listen to me for five seconds to watch those videos. Your speedo things oh. uh, are. I mean, uh, they made me laugh. First of all, that song I've never heard before, and that's one of the funniest things I've uh, ever heard. You want to hear? You want to hear a little bit of Six Degrees? I do. You know where I heard that song first? Ronnie B. Really? Yeah, he played it. He played. I, dude, I've been a, I've been a Ronnie B fan for my whole life. Ronnie so, Fez. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and oh, that's right. And they with Tampa. Four, yeah. So that's right. yeah. And I used to his intros. I think Black Girl used to do them, but those intros. And he put on the Kills one time on one of those intros, and I heard it. The Kills is one of the coolest fucking bands, and that's just the beginning of a Kills song. And then I pulled it out so I didn't get it tapped, yeah, so yeah. that they I could get advertising off. Which of is it. Re just different <laughs> words for your ass. <laughs> Guys, I'm in Mermaids in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Yeah. On the 28th, it's a one nighter. Doug Stanhope recommended it. I'm in there. Oh, okay, yeah. Doug Stan recommended that you're doing it for like a novelty thing. So when you're saying you're like, I'm in Montreal, like, what the hell am I doing with my life, Matt? It's over. Goes, anyway, I'm going to be at Dingleberries and Bumfuck Somerville. Guys, I'm going to be boxing a kangaroo. Yeah, Dayton and Baltimore. Those are the next two dates after that. So if you want to see me on the road, come out. And your website has all your tickets and stuff? Yeah, it does, but I think it got hacked. It's, it's like, I'm not even joking. I think it's midget porn right now. I'm not even fucking around. <laughs> really? Yeah, my website and my. Uh, they both got hacked. But go to burpurpurt.com or burtcast.com. You can hear Jay on my podcast. I, Jay's also on my best of. I have, if you oh, want to thank you. go on. Oh, dude. We have such a blast, so fucking man. hard. How much I retell over and over again that I've always told my dramatic story of starting comedy of how I dropped out of college the next day because I was like, i got to put all my eggs in this basket and be... And, and really delve into this and dive into it full. To, and Bert started cracking up and goes like, you could have done both. <laughs> and that hit me so hard because I've never even overthought it. At 37 years old I was, I think, when we did the podcast, I was like, and, and now, you know, with a daughter who's 14, I'm like, yeah, yeah we could have done both. <laughs> Absolutely could have done both. Never even thought that I could have done both. Uh, he's right. I could have done both. He pulled the veil away from your eyes. I just went on my mom to not make me go to college anymore. Uh, yeah. Jay's uh, on my best of, and it's, it, it's, I think I put you on there twice. Because you oh, tell that geez. story, and you tell the story about Kurt, Kurt taking the, the mattress, out of the, the mattress, <laughs> the mattress out, of the, out of the couch is the funniest thing ever. Listen to the podcast. There are we, we go through some great stories. Definitely check it out. Um, make sure you check out Dan at Hyenas. Uh, we don't have the plugs up here. So that's in, uh, yeah, it's next. That's going to be November 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Dallas. Very nice. And then uh, dancehunter.com for tickets. Hey, and then yes. check out Big J this Thursday through Saturday, October 27th through October 29th at the Stress Factory. Uh, that's BigJComedy.com for tickets, where you can also get tickets to season two of What's Your Fucking Deal on NBC CISO, the taping. It's going to be November 6th through the 10th at the bitter end of New York City, BigJComedy.com. And of course, get your tickets for next Tuesday, live bonfire live. for the New York Comedy Festival, oh, nice. NYComedyFestival.com. Live uh, show, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Village Underground. And hopefully by then we'll have Corey Feldman's forgiveness. Yes, we do, as we end every show. We apologize to Corey Feldman. We're sorry, Corey. Uh, Bert, thank you so much for hanging out. We'll thank catch you guys. you guys on Wednesday. It's the bonfire.